Wow. I, I need that break a little bit. That was a rough night. Oh, hello, folks. Welcome back for I Am The One, The Only. I am Hobo Tom. If I look distracted, it's because I'm at work. Yep, I'm here at work. Here, um, I would say hard at work in the Hobo office. But yep, I am getting some work done. So let me do one little piece of action. These are so conventional. But it's decent, that's decent. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. These could be freaking anything. No feedback. So I have absolutely no clue what I'm doing. I'm back, baby! Um I think last night, I think it was just that night, I said I need a tranquilo. Got a lot done. I had to work three jobs yesterday. Count them. One, two, three. So by the time I came back, kind of caught up in the wrestling and, and just said, I need a tranquilo. And then I found out all this stuff happened in the wrestling world. Charlotte Flair might be gone for a little bit. Who knows? Um, I don't think I don't think there were any disclosed injuries. I think she just wants some time off. With um, I don't know if Andrade's taking off though. She might just go, literally heal herself up. Uh, she had kind of like that injury angle with Nia Jax last night, which I'll talk about. And there's a whole bunch of bad wrestlers out there. You know who I'm talking about, and saying some inappropriate things. Not necessarily that I disagree with them, but. Things that should not be said, though. Yeah, and if I, if I saw Sasha Banks wearing a little G-string thong and sports bra, I'd be like, yeah. But that's all I would say, though. I think that's still acceptable. You never know, though. What Sammy Guevara said, no bueno. Oh, and a shout-out if you missed it. The whole FN show with um Kevin Scampoli. They actually got a new new scoop. That's always cool. I think I had one new scoop once. I think that was when um yeah yeah Zia Lee kind of like tweaked the calf because like she like legit went to the trainers like like the training ambulance. Or whatever they call it in NXT, when when they when they used to do house shows, and they might not be doing house shows longer than I thought. Uh, I think the other news bit: there's no more WWE backstage. Uh, Progress is doing a whole bunch of stuff. I'll give my opinion. Show some images of positivity, which definitely isn't. The work I'm doing right now because this is making me somewhat more depressed. Although this one's not too bad. <laughs> I'll give you the, the grades of generosity. Oh, I thought that was bad. Yeah, that, that was an easy one. But yeah, so I think again, the news bits people were saying things they shouldn't, um, progress wrestling. Is going through a whole reorganization based on allegations. I'm not a reporter. I don't know anything. I just know that that wrestlers have been, from what I understand, which is very little, verbally abusive to I think female staff and female. Wrestlers, uh, Jim Cornette, I think, whether real or fake, even was accused of his wife wanted something from a wrestler. And wait a second, I have to bang your wife for me to get ahead? I don't know about that, but. My mindless comments. Um, Progress Wrestling is going through a whole bunch of changes. I think the thing is, 
Um, uh, wrestlers were named, I think, two of the three WWE wrestlers mentioned are taking legal actions to clear their names, which sounds good. Uh, Jack Gallagher was straight up released. Matt Riddle has been in contact with lawyers, and Jordan Devlin has also been in contact with lawyers. I don't think anything they did happened well while they were in WWE. I think it was more progress. Uh, there were uh, uh, Cobalt, I think, from Progress. Oh, wow, that's right. Impact's on tonight. Joey Styles was supposed to be on. Oh, wow. And he's the head of the whole cancel culture thing. Wonder, wonder what's going to happen. The uh, only thing I'll say about Joey Ryan, even though he's very entertaining, it's that, I guess, Savage, that Randy Savage moment, where in an interview, I think with his brother Lanny Poffo. No, was it Lanny Poffo? I forget. Lanny Poffo was the father. I forget what his uh, brother's name was. But uh, he was Mr. Perfect. No, not, not Mr. Perfect. I'm sorry correct myself he was a genius uh him and the macho man were brothers and you could you could see it a little bit in, in her face and he said yeah randy was the seven the macho man randy savage savage was the 11th there's always a little macho missing randy puffle yeah so i think even i think a lot of wrestlers have said that like uh Ric Flair said, yeah, Richard Flair was the 6, Ric Flair was the 11. Woo! So, again, that was from a time where people really didn't necessarily have a gimmick, but they just turned their personalities up, and then that turned up persona became the gimmick. Uh, so when you're saying, so when very, let me get to the point now. If Joey Ryan portrays a Miami sleazeball, how far does Joey Ryan sleazeball Miami guy fall from, and I don't, I forget what was real. Oh, I can do research though. Sir Joseph Ryan. Serious. So Joey Ryan was a Miami sleazeball. How far away is Let's see here? I can do some actual research. So how far away is Joseph Meehan away from Joey Ryan? And whoa, that's with minors. That's like the second person with minors, too. That's pretty sketchy, folks. There was a whole thing with the Velveteen Dream in minors, which was bad. So you always wonder. I know the thing is some minors. Like I'm an old guy, so I have to think twice. Because some of them are just straight up jailbait. I don't mind saying that either. Because it's honestly the truth. Especially here in, in Bumtona Beach. I correct myself. Daytona Beach. One day I won't be able to... No! We'll never get to that level of political correctness where I no longer call this place Bumtona Beach. But that's okay. So yeah, there's a lot of negativity in the world. Just to show, just to show that I am a positive person. I'm going to show you some positive images. If these don't give you a fuzzy, warm feeling, I don't know what will. Sir, fuzzy, aww, aww. You know, you just want to say, aww, how cute and fluffy. Let's see here. One positive image. Oh, Nixon Newell. Wait, look at that. She, she's so confused, and I was so happy. Aww, look at that. There we go. There's another positive image somewhere. Uh, let's see. Here. Let me find one more. Oh, yeah. 
super positive image that I look so confused. Uh, let's see here. So one more positive image I can share so that this show gets actually decent viewership. Let's see here. No, I don't want to show that picture. That's just an ugly picture of me. By the way, I have to find a picture of myself. I am not. Oh, here's a positive picture. There we go. The little mother cardinal up in the nest. That has to be a positive image. And then let's see here. I don't know. Is that all the positive imagery I have? What other positive images do I have? Oh, yeah, folks. Here's, here's, oh, wait. That's, that's, a, that's a whole other image. Oh, well. You get the, you get the, you get the point. Let's try and be somewhat positive. Again, there's all the negative stuff going on. I'm like, whoa. Again, some of those allegations, some of them, some of them are still allegations. So I'm not going to bury anyone. Again, if you come off, and your normal personality as being a little leery. You take a look at some girl and say, hmm, indeed. And then you become a pro wrestler. I'm sure it goes beyond the indeed. Uh, again, progress is changing up a whole bunch of stuff, mainly upper management stuff. Wrestlers have been released. This is the new Maruno problem. I'll probably get... Because I remember back in the day when there were no cell phones. And if you were a reporter and you reported on something like that, guess guess what you were doing? You were doing nothing. You got blackballed. You're like, you're a fink. You're a dirty rat fink. Oh, wow. They finally sent me some feedback. So freaking confusing. That's okay. If I'm really that bad, though, they'll, they'll let me go. In fact, this 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 works soon. It's supposed to be over really soon anyway. I highly doubt my bosses are watching this. I don't think they're wrestling fans. But let's talk about some money again. Let's get to some positivity. I just showed you some images that should make you feel fuzzy warm inside. Let's talk about some more positive things. Let's talk about Monday Night Raw. There was some good stuff. There was some not good, so good stuff. Monday Night Raw is taking on. I think this is the reason why I took a break from wrestling because there was a lot more this and a lot less this. Uh, starts off. Oh, wait, is that the most positive thing? No, that's not the ice cream truck. Every so often, the ice cream truck passes by. That's always a positive. <laughs> That's just someone playing their music probably way too loud. Let's see here. Well, if I'm scoring too high. Uh, it's so hard to figure out. But that's okay. So again, ice cream trucks are always positive things. Starts off, well, let's talk enough ice cream truck talk. Let's talk about Drew McIntyre. Starts off, he says, where's my next challenger? Oh, it's going to be Dolph Ziggler. And Robert Roode eventually is going to make his comeback. Sometime soon. Um, and after that, Nia Jax comes out, pulls up a chair, sits in the ring. R-Truth confuses her for being a ninja. R-Truth always brings levity to whatever he does. And um, then eventually, Akira Tozawa and his ninjas show up. And then Charlotte take like shows up the ringside and Ajax beats her up uh so that's pretty good uh there's some other stuff going involved and that was that segment so the first match again we have the viking raiders and street profits backstage cutting a promo um and this leads us to the first wrestling match of the night after 20 minutes not the way you want to start off a wrestling show folks 
Uh, so we have the Viking Raiders and the Street Prophets. For the most part, it's 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 big guy versus big guy, and they try to shoulder tackle each other, which is a really fun opening spot to do, because it's like neither of them can actually get the shoulder tackle. They both weigh about the same. They're both running, both same momentum or e fairly much equal momentum. I like that. Physics works. Uh, from there, for uh, I think, and I got their first names confused. I'm sorry. Uh, Ford jumped up, but he got he got caught and then on the outside. And he got power bomb into Dawkins. Um, that was more big guy action, which is good. Ford's there, I think, just get beat up. Somewhat formulaic tag team match. It was fun though. There's a body slam bomb combo, which is always good. Eventually, the Street Profits, after a little bit more back and forth, uh, the Viking Raiders did get their offense in, very typical. They did uh, all four men did cartwheels in the ring, which is okay. I can live with that. Uh, eventually, Ford got the big splash in. Uh, on Ivar, Eric was kind of knocked loopy by Dawkins a little bit. Street, Prof Street Profits retain their championship. It was a good match. Solid stuff. Cheeseburger match. Um, I think as a qualifier, remember in the title this was the night it was the Raw of Championships. So with that being said, So with that being said, I think four championships. One, two, yeah, four championships were defended tonight. So this was the first one. Um, then of course Angel Garza and Andrade came out and jumped them. Whoa, what evilness is this? Again, well, from the little backstage thing, saw Zelina Vega, saw the light bulb go off, the gears were turning. Damn, Zelina Vega's hot in pink latex. Whew! Probably can't say that anymore, but oh well. Uh, yep, then so there was a Seth Rollins segment. I'm, I'm so over the Monday Night Messiah part. I just want to see Dominic take out one of Seth's eyes. So whoo, pluck it out just like from Kill Bill. Then Angel Garza... Uh, they, they did their interview. Angel Garza woos Charlie Samora. Selena Vega is trying to stop it. Selena Vega, it's not gonna happen. Angel Garza is the Latin lover. He's gonna he's he's gonna get in Charlie's panties one day. Yep, it's destined for that. <laughs> even though even though I think he's engaged, that must be weird and awkward if you're engaged to someone and you're having like this rom romantic liaison with an announcer and you're saying all these very heavy sexual innuendo things and and your significant others at home that would just be weird and awkward but as long as he's professional about it again these are pro wrestlers too so you never know what goes on in the locker room stays in the locker room or what goes on in the janitorial closet of the performance center stays in the janitorial closet of the performance center. Let's see here. That one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. Um, then we had Asuka taking on Charlotte Flair. This was actually really fun, too. Classic start of the match. I love it when they do a classic start, tie up, test of strength, into the ropes. There is just something good about that start. Um, and then, of course, when it breaks down, Asuka being the heavy striker. She, she didn't miss a hip attack, though. And Charlotte's chops. Woo! She learned how to do them chops like her daddy. Uh, Asuka, she, oh, those kicks though. I don't care how well placed they are. That still has to hurt or at least sting a little bit. Poor Charlotte's getting kicked right in the tits. Can't be comfortable. 
let's see here then. The Charlotte. Again, she has a great she she does have a great looking spear, but before that she did something else. We got to the outside a little bit. Uh, back in As uh, Charlotte hit a spear. Asuka then did the standing rolling Juji Katami. That's always nice to see. Uh, she did the, 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 the their, eh, la, la, they did their typical spot. Asuka went for a triangle choke. Charlotte had her up in the power bomb. Eventually, though, Asuka put the Asuka lock on Charlotte Flair. Indeed. And Charlotte Flair tapped. This was face Asuka, too. You can tell by because she's now wearing the bright colored outfits. The uh, bright red, blues, greens. Yeah, uh, not so much green, but the, the red, gold, and blue. Very face-looking Asuka colors. Asuka won, retained her belt. So that's two championships that were retained. Uh, this was a good match, too. I think it's, yeah, it was a good cheeseburger match. It went longer. I probably would have given it a higher rating. They, again, they they're doing a very formulaic like seven to fifteen minute match, so it's kind of hard. These are freaking so rough. Not sourcing. I don't know. I don't know. That's close enough, because I, I know what it's not, at least. But again, it tends to be very formally. Pretty good. Then there's Nia Jax with an interview. Uh, Randy Orton recap with an Edge promo. Charlotte backstage. She gets jumped by Nia Jax. She gets her arm into said garbage bin, and lid closes on said arm. Then it was R-Truth against Akira Tozawa. R-Truth comes in singing and dancing. Akira Tozawa's already in, in the ring. Himself, no ninjas surround him. But then R Truth gets jumped by Bobby Lashley because Bobby Lashley is very upset at R Truth because even though he pinned MVP, he cost Lashley the championship match, and we saw that interview earlier. Uh, R Truth just just the full Nelson. That was the end of that. Akira Tozawa, the cowardly heel, stuck out of the ring, and as, as soon as he sees that R Truth is down, flat on his back. He attacks. He gets the quick pinfall. So they have a change in championship belts. I like the fact that they did this in the ring for a change. They actually announced this was a planned match. So that's good. It was okay. I mean, you know what's going to happen. Well, you didn't know what was going to happen. I figured R-Truth would win. But once Bobby Lashley showed up, you know you know what was, was going to go down. It was a ham sandwich. And then there was the next match. A little interview, a little, little, little dust up between Liv Morgan and Talia. They choose to settle their problems ringside. So we have. Liv Morgan taking on Natalia. I'll tell you what, from, from what I saw of it, because I was kind of eating dinner at this time, this was like a glorified squash match. Poor Liv got, got wrecked. And then Lana showed up. And she was in Natalia's corner. WWE. You better watch yourself. Because, yeah, Lana as the female valet to Natalia. That's interesting. This is Natalia eventually, and uh, Natalia did put Liv in the sharpshooter. Liv taps out. Of course, this happens all after being distracted by Lana. Oh, wait a second. Uno, dos. Indeed. And wait a second. Go backstage, there's Ruby Riot. Whoa! 
we're getting some pretty triple X rated here stuff here. So uh, that was the end of that. So again, it was, it was might as well have been in your squash. Liv got some off and off. Uh, Natalia wins. I could have had the same match. It was a ham sandwich. And the big show gets interviewed. And then, woo! Ric Flair comes out. He's like, Randy Orton is now the greatest wrestler ever. Or at least for this time. Which, which is not saying much. Greatest true professional wrestler, even though I'm sure you can talk about Sting, Steamboat, Flair, Dusty Rhodes, Macho Man. Who else was probably a lot better? So now that we've seen, again, the Legend Killer eventually. Big Show is going to fall victim to him. That's almost a guaranteed. But then we had Bailey and Sasha come out. And they're taking on the Iconics. I like saying Iconics. I'll tell you what. I'm somewhat disappointed. Well, I'll, I'll tell you my, my things. Oh, wait. Liv and Ruby happens later. Well, still, that's four of them, though. So, Bailey and Sasha taking on the Iconics. Those quick knees by Billy K. Almost, almost KO Sasha Banks. It could have been over like that. They could have won the belt. That actually would have been somewhat interesting. Because then it would set up a little bit for Sasha v. Bailey, which they're doing a really slow burn on. Which I guess is good. Um, Peyton Royce, Royce gets yanked off the ring apron by Bailey, so she can't make the tag. Uh, Bailey then, oh, instead of doing her, oh, she goes, I caught it! And then hits the elbow in the corner onto Peyton Royce. Yeah, Peyton Royce would have to be in Florida still because her husband, Sean Spears, is stuck here in Jacksonville. That makes sense. And they just have a threesome. Well, with all this insinuations, I shouldn't say anything anymore. Be nice and quiet. Uh, Peyton, I'll tell you what. She has that. She has one of the most... Oh, well, she has a great perfect flex. She has a few other perfect things too, but her perfect plex looks good. Uh, then Sasha Banks tried to do the three amigos in honor of Eddie Guerrero, only hit two other three. Then she hit the bank statement, and then it was over. Uh, it was backstabber into the back statement. Peyton Royce taps really quickly. She looks like she cranked a little bit. I'll tell you what, the one fun thing about this match is that for this match, they actually didn't need people ringside. These four women are loud enough for everyone. So that was pretty cool. Um, then there's a moment between Liv and Ruby Riot. Maybe Ruby Riot wants to kiss and make up. Who knows? Uh, let's see, let's get this one done. Oh, so mind money at the stage. Why they switch me? Again, I like the fact that they give me one really good one followed by one really bad one. Then it was MVP and MV in the MVP lounge. Uh, his guest was Apollo Cruz. He's like, "Hey, listen, you need me on your side. If not, you're gonna be nothing." Calls out Shelton Benjamin. Shelton Benjamin beats up Apollo Cruz and the MVP lounge. We go to commercial break. They clear the ring very quickly. And we have the final match, the final championship match. Oh, uh, wait a second. Before I talk about that, um, the Bailey, Sasha Banks, Bailey and Sasha Banks and the Iconics. That was short. They could have done so much more. It was a ham sandwich. And then we, uh, we have the Liv and Ruby Riot kiss and makeup sequence in the back. Then the MVP lounge with Apollo Crews. Apollo Crews does not want anything to do with MVP. So Shelton Benjamin jumps. And we might see Shelton Benjamin join MVP in his new stable. That would be pretty cool. The new nation of domination. I don't even know if I can say that anymore. 
Man, I want to go back to the days of the late 80s, early 90s. When you could say stuff, at least. And wear neon colors. Hyper colors. Yeah! Zima and Crystal Pepsi. Oh, that is some nostalgia for you. But then uh, we get back ringside. You have Paul Cruz versus Shelton Benjamin. They trade blows. Shelton, he does that slingshot and disagree over the top. So Apollo Cruz falls down on the ground. Then he just, at one point, they had the shoulder breaker. That was awesome with the top rope. Uh, Apollo Cruz had tried to do a moonsault, but got caught by Shelton Benjamin in an armbar. Then they went back to the outside. And then Shelton Benjamin, I don't know what he was trying to do. He just did like a flying head, but right into the ring post. That was some weird thing happening. I don't understand that. You just go like like flying headbutt into the ring post. Apollo Cruz ducked out like way too early or something. Apollo Cruz eventually hits the blue, the blue falcon bomb. Never thought I'd say the blue falcon bomb, blue thunder bomb, would ever win. But I guess with Apollo Cruz it does. That's his new finisher. Well, I do like that like the like super combo because at least. The thing is with the combo, the combo gorilla press, standing moonsault, standing shooting star, you at least can make the valid physical point where the guy's just all out of breath. Like you dropped him, jumped on his back twice from a standing position with torque because of angular momentum of ro ro angular momentum of rotation. So, again, you can make a real, and, I, and that just seems so much better. Um, then Lashley comes out. He full Nelsons the heck out of poor Paul Cruz. Paul Cruz does retain his belt. All the champions retain their belt. I figured f for all the championship belts that were going to be featured on Raw, one belt, would, one belt or title or, or tag belt would have switched hands. Nothing really happened. I mean, they, they pushed this to be like... A third tier pay per view, and it just felt like another Raw, which I guess is like a fifth tier pay per view. So I'm sure there's a fourth tier pay per view out there somewhere. Uh, so Lashley, so this was a fun enough match. It was, it was, it was good. It was just some again that weird flying head, but it was a ham sandwich of a match. Then the final spot, the main event spot, it was Ray and Dominic. They want to confront Seth Rollins. Um, Seth and his cronies, um, Angel Garza, no, not Angel Garza, but um, Murphy and Austin Theory, they, they, they jump them. Again, for right now, it's, it's three on two. They start, to, they get Dominic, they're going to puncture Dominic's eye. If you been nasty. Then, of course, Aleister Black. Pick a fight with me. A real man. Came out and so did Alberto Carrillo. Again, I'm sure he grew up watching Rey Mysterio matches. They saved Dominic. So now it's four on three. The heels run away. And that was the end of Raw. I don't know. There was some wrestling, not a lot of it. This is why I look forward to watching Impact tonight, which I will be live streaming. Because that just makes it so much better. Uh, AEW has a lot more wrestling involved. And yeah, WWEs, they're reverting back to, to when I left. And I think, and I'll close on this thought, because of this whole global situation, the WWE changed their format around a little bit where it's more sports oriented because it must be real there are no sports anymore um there won't be for a couple more weeks i think but if they change their format around they could bring in some new people if they really met let's say hey we're i'll tell you what they should have done they should, should have had tournaments for belts and everything and then on the pay-per-views just have just have belts have a ranking system or have tournaments to do all this it might bring the casual sports fan and say, hey, this actually looks something like sport. 
Or is it something like being a soap opera? Maybe they dropped the ball with that. With that, uh, that ends raw. And everyone be positive out there. And you'll see me later live streaming some Impact Wrestling. I'll try and remember because I do have to go out Ooh, a couple of minutes. Works over. I have to get my booze, my black cherry soda.